Good day, friends. I made what is ostensibly a Christmas dress, at the very least a holiday dress, the second in my series of doomed holiday near disasters. The experience has led me to the conclusion that the Christmas dress is a particularly bad idea. You may have surmised that we are looking down the lens of hindsight, which is, despite my reliance on prescription eyewear, nearly always 2020. After much waffling about turning the idea of a trendy 1970s gunny sacks mistress over in my mind repeatedly, I came to the conclusion that my chances of wearing such a thing more than once per year are fairly minimal. Plus the cost of the seasonal quilting cotton required for such an effort, not to mention the trim and rickrack, would be outside my budget. How is it Rachel Maxey puts it? Oh yes, I'm a cheap ass bitch. A cheap ass bitch whose weight fluctuates up and down depending on whether or not her stove and thus ability to cook proper meals is working. Long story. I'm hoping to start doing weekly update videos to break up the tedium between big project reveals, so I'll regale you with that gripping tale some other time. I printed and cut out the cashmerette Upton dress according to my custom measurements. A few viewers have recommended Cashmerette, and the company is apparently owned and operated by a curvy lady, so I figured it was a safer bet than trying one of McCall's newer plus-size experiments. The Upton dress appealed to me immediately because the picture on the website featured a distinctly retro look. If last year's pinafore attempt is any indication, this may be a trend. If you pick up the expansion pack, yes, the dress has an expansion pack, you can choose from two different skirt constructions, a variety of skirt lengths, multiple neckline options, sleeve styles. The dress is a choose-your-own-adventure kit all its own. There are instructions for customizing the fit, even down to the bust size and whether you prefer darts or princess seams. I decided to keep it simple and go for the Morgan Donner classic. Square neckline, no sleeves, ankle length skirt. I preferred the look of the pleats over the gores. Mum suggested using darts rather than princess seams since there's a faux waistband cutting off the line of the princess seam at the waist. The skirt length was initially up in the air because I was going to use some stash fabric, a nice light suiting that I swiped from one of the moms sometime in the last 20 years and fortunately does not smell overwhelmingly of garage. Trouble is, I wasn't sure I'd have enough fabric. Fortunately, Mum wanted to go to Fabricland, and I very quickly found myself in the clearance section happily sifting through all sorts of discount fabric. Getting something fancy for three or four dollars a meter rather than the usual ten is a pretty big win in my books. I came away with an obscene amount of fashion fabric and about a meter and a half of lining. I have no idea what the fiber content of the fabric is, but I think the texture will make the skirt drape really nicely. I'm enough of a firebug already without being urged to perform burn tests, thanks. If I have enough of this stuff, I might even get a nice blouse out of it someday. With the lining. Confession time, I messed this up and had to cut a second bodice lining. But that's okay. I'm fully aware of my mini sewing limitations. This is why I bought extra lining fabric in case my first try turned out to be a mock-up. Hooray for the clearance shelves! My one major issue with these fabrics, they're thin and they fray at the drop of a hat. The lining is also slippery as all get out. The instructions suggest surging the finished seams, but I found out while running a few experiments that surging is problematic. It's like trying to surge thin, slippery paper. Yeah, 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 you get what you pay for, right? I sincerely and respectfully invite you to bite me. Or maybe just boop the like button, whatever floats your boat. My first lining mock-up was a bit of a shambles and somehow I lost the dark placement. I had a moment where I wondered if I stumbled upon an accidental C-3PO cosplay. Or maybe the version played by Joan Rivers in Spaceballs. 
Nevertheless, I persevered. I'd like to tell you that I finished the dress in time for Yule and Christmas, but that would be a lie. When I realized I was sewing the horsehair trim into the hem on the literal wrong side of the skirt, I had to put it up. I needed all the time I could get for family stuff, and the dress would have to wait. Besides, my sister-in-law and I had been volunteered as tribute for much of the cooking on Christmas Day. This probably would have been a much different video if the dress was being enthusiastically modeled after long car rides in minus 30 weather and possible stains from cooking. New Year's wasn't much better and we spent it curled up in our comfy clothes playing video games with friends. I look forward to finding other opportunities to wear my new dress. Opportunities that involve neither gravy nor the possibility of getting my skirt caught in a car door. The pattern is actually really quite well put together. The analogy of a choose your own adventure book is pretty apt. There are even little directions like, if you're making a pleated dress, go to page 32, or for the bodice without sleeves, turn three times witter shins and light a red candle. I may have made that last one up. However, it's those same detailed fragmented pattern directions that were my downfall. Somewhere along the line, I zigged when I should have zagged, and I sewed down something that should have been left open. So putting in the zipper was slightly more challenging than it should have been. And as these things tend to snowball, it also affected the way the lining was finished on the inside. My thought on this is, and I'm sticking to this opinion, make all the mistakes you want, as long as they're on the inside. I feel pretty lucky that most of my mistakes are covered up. Most. I don't think there's anything really noticeably wrong with the dress. I'm bound to be more critical because I'm the one directly interacting with it. Otherwise, I think I did a pretty good job. What do you think?
have a feeling that once I've knocked all the bugs out of the pattern, a summer sundress in a funky cotton print may be a possibility. One that hits about mid-calf. Maybe I might even wear it outside the house. I've also realized that winter holiday dresses need to be started somewhere in October. Mid-November at the latest. You've been forewarned, this could get macabre. And I'm still pretty sure that the leftover dress fabric will make a fabulous blouse. Possibly with great big poofy sleeves. Till then. This falls under the tangentially related errata that you folks who stick around to the end get to enjoy. Yes, I do use big words in real life. I had a supervisor once coach me for making the rest of my team feel stupid because I used to read the dictionary for fun as a socially awkward teenager and the vocabulary stuck. Remember a video or two ago when I said something about gaining sewing skills leading to altering all of your store-bought clothes? This shirt's neckline originally closed like way down here. I spent the half hour before I recorded the reveal footage sewing it closed. Why, additional? Why? This isn't even the first plus size top I've bought where they thought the neckline should be open to the navel. Even layered over another shirt? That looks sus as all hell. So yeah. Problem solved with purple thread and a sewing needle. Now I'm considering fancying it up with some vintage buttons from Mum's stash. Unexpected life skills for the win? <laughs>